Hello, welcome to StreamBot 101. This is where I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of information on how you do imports, exports, find logs, and use backups when you need to. Now, just real quick, I want to give the shout out on this video to Summer Dawn, who was the one who asked the question about, well, how do you do this stuff? Because, well, if you're new, you really don't know. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and get into this and describe it for you. So let's go ahead and let's start with imports. Okay, so let's just go ahead and say you are on the streamer bot extension site, which has so many wonderful imports you can use for streamer bot that are made by so many different amazing creators. So let's say we're going to use one of my favorites, which is the random image from a folder. I'm just going to go ahead and download this import code. Well, now we've got this import code, which doesn't really open with anything or so it says, but you don't click on this file. In fact, you just open up your streamer bot and you're going to come up to this tab up here that says import. Click on that. And once that box that says import string is right here, all you have to do is take that little file that you downloaded and drag and drop. That's going to come up with a whole bunch of letters and characters in here. That's not what we're worried about. What we need to make sure is that there is something that is actually going to be imported here. And so all you have to do is click import. There are one items that will be overwritten. Yeah, that's because I'm redoing it and it's fine. So when we come over into our actions, I found it here in none, which sometimes they come with their own group. You just have to remember what you're looking for. But here it gave me three different actions I can work with. Now, this is the one that's currently active, and this is the one I typically wind up using. So now that this action's in here, all you have to wind up doing then is kind of following the instructions that are given to you, which for this, it even has instructions written in here. Change value to folder containing images. Note the double backwards backslashes. So importing really isn't too terribly difficult. It's a matter of just taking the file and putting it in there. But if it's not a file, then what do you do? Fairly simple. So for instance, on my website, on one of the pages here, if I scroll down because I haven't updated this, you'll notice this gigantic wall of like random text and whatnot. And it'll even tell you to copy the import string below. So I'm going to have to highlight all of this ridiculously long thing. And I would copy, then go into StreamerBot and do the same thing with the import. And then I just paste all that in there. Now it's giving me the random movie generate that I have put up there for people. If I import, there it is right there, came under the ad manager. Now this is a similar thing where it's the, guess, the random image from folder, but I had altered this one to basically take out the extensions on images and various other things. As part of what I did in the make a Twitch ads game. And my ad game is essentially just guessing a movie scene that pops up, figuring out what movie it came from. But I show you how to do put all that together in three very long videos. But that is imports in a nutshell, and it's not too terribly difficult to really work with, especially when you're wanting to take some of these amazing ideas that creators like myself will put out for free for anybody to use. Now, if you created something and you really wanted to share it with everybody and you were so proud of this and you were like, this is something that maybe somebody else wants to, wants to see, wants to use, how would you get it to them? Let me show you how to export. Now, let's say we had something like my new long-term goal widget, which if you haven't seen it, I've got a video on it that I just did recently. How I would export this was you click on the action, hold control while you're clicking so you can click each one of these that you need, making sure you grab everything you want, right click, and you will see add to export. Once you do that, yes, that is it because if you wanted to add more to it, you could, but all I need to do then is go up to the export and it appears with everything that I had just added to this export. And then you can come down here and name it. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's my long-term goal widget. And I am the author. And let's say I did a total overhaul. This is now version 2.0.1. You can version them however you want. Then you can set a description here. Either you can describe changes you made, or you can describe what that whole widget does in general, or you can leave it blank. However you really want it to work. And you have two options to do this. Export to clipboard, which would give you basically this. This is an export to clipboard option. Or export to file, which is typically the more preferred option. So when you do an export to file, all you need to do is name it something. And then you can add SB for streamer bot, me, I do mine OSURD because OSU Phoenix's R&D division. Ah, ah. 
and then you just hit save. Exports have been set to there. So now if I hit OK, you can either clear the export or you can do another export if you wanted to or add more to it. Me, I typically clear it. And then just close. And there it is, my long-term goal widget. And I can take it, I can drag it, I can upload it wherever I want. It's whatever you want to do with that file. Most times I will use this as a method to back up my work. You can get things from people and you can share things with people. So sometimes things aren't going to work the way you want. I mean, we go through a lot of different versions of StreamerBot. And with StreamerBot, we do go through these different versions and they typically look like this. But currently we are moving towards a format that looks like this. This is the alpha version that is going to be coming out at some point. But with this, things have changed up and I'll be honest, it is a wonderful change, but that doesn't stop it, however, from being different in some areas where some things do need to be adjusted. So when these things happen and somebody will say, can you send me the logs? You need to be able to know how to do that. So when you're in StreamerBot and you need to send logs, all you have to do is come up to the menu up here and you can see this open log folder. And so when this pops up, I typically make sure that the date modified, it has the current date to it. So if you needed the latest one, it's right here. You can drag it and send it to somebody. Now, if you want to take a look inside, you can. These logs will happen every time you open StreamerBot and close it out. It will save all that information. And you can see that this particular StreamerBot started August 13th, 2024. But it has saved every instance of logs for that. Now, again, I know you guys are not looking to... <laughs> look through logs. Uh, if you're new to StreamerBot, you may not be doing that. Unless you already know how to code in C Sharp and you really wanted to go for it, there's where you find it. But then that brings me to one last thing that I do want to share with you guys, and that is how to restore StreamerBot should something go catastrophically wrong. And I'll be honest, I've only had one instance where it ever went catastrophically wrong in like two years of using it. But this is handy information to know. So what you'll need to be able to do is find the folder that you have stored your streamer bot in, which this is mine. And you're gonna look for this folder that says backup. Now, you're gonna notice there's a lot of them in here, and there is a good reason why there are so many backups. Now, the reason it creates so many of these backup files is every time streamer bot closes, it will save a save state. So that way, if for some reason things are corrupted, you're able to go right back to where you left off. Or if you have messed up an action so bad, like I have, where <laughs> you, you really don't remember how to get, you know, what you created back to a working state. Well, if I know that, you know, a day previous, it, everything was fine before I started tinkering with it today, then this gives me an option to go back, you know, to a state where that still was there before I tampered with it. So if we double click on one, what you're gonna see is file names. Now, if you have WinRAR, like I do, or 7-Zip, or something of that nature, you can extract to the folder this will need to go to, or I can just show you how to drag and drop, which is one of my preferred ways of doing things in general. So all these, you're gonna try and find them, which is going to be in this data folder. So if you look, you have actions JSON here, as well as here. Authorization DB here, this is how you know that these, this is where it needs to go, and all of them, all of these go in here. So all you have to do is take this, grab it, drag, drop, and hit replace. Then once you've replaced all that, your streamer bot will be where it was on that specific save state. Now, a quick note about it is if you have done different versions of streamer bot and you bring in one that was originally on an older version of streamer bot into a newer version of streamer bot, if there are anything that needs to possibly change, you'll have to look at what needs to change for that. But it is still a very viable option that if something goes horribly wrong or you mess up something beyond repair, you have a way back. And now you know imports, exports, logs, and backing up. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you as a, as a bonus thing is somebody did ask me recently, how do you take StreamerBot and move it from one computer to another? Well, honestly, all you got to do is grab the folder and move it wherever you want because... StreamerBot is self-contained. There was no install you actually did. So it is literally a program you can drag and drop in any computer you need to. So if you wanted to take a copy of it, put it on a USB drive just so you have that copy, go for it. If you want to take, take what you've got on your main PC, put it on your laptop, so that way you have 
you know, a mobile version, you can do that. Does it have, does Streamerbot have a learning curve? Yes. Yes, it does. But there are a lot of videos out there that will help you through Streamerbot in so many different ways, including one of my own, where I kind of go through some of the basics just to get you started. And remember, when you're starting to put things together in Streamerbot for the first time, start small, start easy, get a feel for what you're doing, and slowly get into bigger things. Don't try to build the most outrageous widgets to begin with. So I welcome you to go ahead and download any of the widgets that I have on my shop at shop.osuphoenix.tv. I also welcome you to check out the ones that are too big for the shop that are on my website, osuphoenix.tv. It'll be under Streamerbot and OSU Phoenix or something of that nature. I have the links down below, so make sure you're checking it out. And if you find this helpful, hey, awesome. Subscribe. I keep doing videos like this, especially when you tell me I don't know how to do this. I will make a video about it. But for now, that's all I got for you. And I will hopefully catch you on the next video. Mwah! Have a fun one.